I'm here with Yannick Hartmann, who is the technology evangelist of Hololight. And Hololight is a mixed reality startup that already has the Magic Leap One. Thank you, Yannick, for inviting me to your offices. Yes, thank you for your time that you uh, found time to come to us. Sure. I mean, it's it's very cool to try out the Magic Leap One. I think probably this is the first Magic Leap One in Europe. Could it be? Yes, uh, I think so. Wow. Um, yeah. That is, that is fantastic. Um, probably you can tell our viewers why you, as Hololites, have one of the first Magic Leap ones in Europe? Uh, yes, of course. Um, that's a little bit uh, funny because um, it's all about one contact person okay. in the United States. Yeah. Uh, the name is uh, Jed Muashi from okay. BadVR and um, he have good contacts there. And um, he talked with Magic Leap, and because of that, we are uh, we have the possibility to um, present today here the uh, Magic Leap. Wow, nice. Yes, and um, yeah, I think it's a very strong de device, and um, I'm really looking forward to the test the testing out with you today here. Great, yeah, very very nice. So um, I'm I'm very impressed by it, I must say. So this this has been really awesome. So please. Tell, tell me a bit more about uh, why your company has this device. What does your company do? Mm -hmm. What does Hololite do? Uh, yes, Hololite is a mixed reality startup. Okay. We are uh, developing um, industrial solutions on hand-mounted displays like the Microsoft HoloLens, the Decry Glass, or as an example right now, the yeah. uh, Magic, Magic Leap. Leap. Yes, yeah. <laughs> of course. And um, yeah, th that's the reason why we decided to get one device, of yeah. course, uh, because we, we uh, everybody was looking forward for, for this device and yeah. uh, uh, to look where are the strengths and where are the difference to the Microsoft HoloLens. Yeah. And um, yes. Awesome. So now that you have tested it, what is your impression about the Magic Leap 1? Ah, yes. At first, um, I, I didn't... Uh, knew what I could think about the Magic Leap because there were some bad reviews in the okay, internet yeah, exactly. on YouTube uh, exactly, yeah. from the United States and um, then I tried it all, uh, out today a little bit and um, what I saw is um, absolutely strong. It's a really strong device. I like it very much uh -huh. and um, there are some uh, things which are a little bit better than by the Microsoft HoloLens yeah. as an example and a lot of things which are uh, better or come nearly to the Microsoft HoloLens. Okay. And, um, yeah, I, I think that it's um, a good device and we are happy to have it here. Yeah, especially for you as developers. Yes, of course. You, I mean, you're, you're working on these mixed reality applications. And you know what? Probably you could tell our viewers more about um, what kind of applications do you work on? Who are mm -hmm. your customers? And, and how do you help them with mixed reality like Magic Leap and HoloLens? Yes, uh, we focus on uh, big industrial um, companies. Okay. Um, like uh, a few from the big five uh, from the most 500 industrial players in okay. the world are our customers and um, our applications are all about in the area of maintenance, trainings, service utility mm -hmm. and um, everything around this direction mm -hmm. and um, normally we find um, some use cases with the companies together, that's okay. the way we are, we are doing usually and um, then we are going from a POC to a project and um, companies spend, can spend a lot of time, a lot of money and of course uh, a lot of stress with applications um, we can, um, they can save offer a lot of, them. They can save a lot of money. Yes, money of okay. course and time, and time is money. Yeah. Yeah, so that, makes <laughs> that, that makes sense. So um, do I understand it correctly? If, um, if I'm a company, I can mm -hmm. go to you mm -hmm. and uh, I can tell you, hey, I have this problem. I would like to visualize that in yes. mixed reality. And then you say, okay, we're going to make it for you. Yes, yes, of <laughs> course. Um, so, so like very individual like solutions. Yes, uh, especially um, uh, as you said, yes, we, we create individual solutions for the, for the industry. Look where are the use cases where we can help the, the different com companies. Mm -hmm. And um, the feedback we get in the past from the most of the, uh, the companies um, where that they want to have an application where they can visualize their 3D content. Yeah, that makes sense. Yes, and, and because of that, um, we told us the question, okay, what can we do to solve the problem? Yeah. And then we created our first software product 
um, okay, Hall of View. And uh, with Hall of View, uh, companies are able to, um, yeah, to convert their 3D files, mm -hmm. uh, load them up in Hall of View per drag and drop, and yeah. um, load their 3D content in the air, and they can interact with it. They can make cuts, they can rotate the object like a motor or whatever, and can use it for training, as an example. Cool. Yes. So it means like probably uh, some company is already using Autodesk in their company, yes. and then they want to visualize it in a room together when they, all the engineers are together, and they can simply use your um, Hall of View. Hall of View is the name. And it's already finished. You can, they can use it, and they can directly um, see the 3D models that they made from Autodesk desk in augmented reality yes whole of you is out of the box available on the market and it's a finished product cool yeah i must say i have tried it actually already they have showed it to me on the on the on the microsoft um, hololens yes and uh, yeah it is it is pretty awesome i was pretty excited about it I, th i think i looked at some kind of 3d model of a motor right yes yes it was a, a, a car V8, motor or yes what? and um It is kind of magical that this um, 3D model was floating in the middle of our of the meeting room here that we hear right now, and um, I could use my hands to to interact yeah. with the model. Like I can I can see from all the sides. I can see the cross section view, like all these kind of things, right? It's, yes, it's that's really right. And um, now you are a person which um, it was re very easy uh, for you to interact with the yeah. hologram. I directly was using it. Yes, but but. Um, people who are a little bit older than you or me, um, <laughs> uh, the, it's not a question about uh, the age, don't <laughs> understand me wrong, yeah, but yeah, um, yeah. some people um, aren't so fast in learning the uh, gesture controls, uh, and gesture controls yes. yeah. and, and because of that we um, decided to find a way to uh, solve this problem okay. and we um, created a holo stylus, ah. it's looking like a pen. And it makes the interaction with the holograms ah, a lot of easier. Yes. Ah, okay, cool. So it's some kind of controller. Uh, it's like a pen. It's look okay. like a pen. I can show you. Please, please, please do that. And this is now only as an, an example. Okay, cool. It's a holo stylus now, available yeah. as a dev kit version. Nice. And with that, you have a precision under two millimeters to interact with the holograms. Two millimeters. Yes. Wow. And, um, We, we try to reach can uh, you write? precision in the sub-millimeter. And yes, you can use it for writing notes in your application. Cool. Or you, uh, also, like, is, is it like three degrees, uh, six degrees of freedom? Or can you draw like this? Yes, yes. Wow. Like a normal pen in your, in your no. hand. And nice. you have two buttons um, yeah. where you can interact with the hologram to hold it or to place it to another place. Okay. To, um, yeah. Um, From one place to the other place, you can take the distance and... Um, That's really cool. Around it, yes. Yeah, I could tell it, it worked uh, pretty easily right, with, the, with the finger gesture, but of I think, yeah, that makes even more sense. Yes, and, so, and so we decided for this design because everybody knows who's working a pen. Yeah. Nobody must, must explain it. Exactly. And uh, we all know it since we are a child, and um, that was the reason why we um, yeah, created the Olo Stylos together with the MCE Innsbruck. Okay. Yeah. So this is a finished product now already, or is it like, um, are you selling this now already, or is it like close to being sold? Um, it's out, uh, you, ca you can buy it, it's, uh, you can pre-order it, and okay. it's going uh, to sell in the middle of September. Nice. And um, yeah, it's a unique device. And Cool. Very, I think it's going to be very useful for people to more easily interact with, with the Holoview app. So um, your customers, most of them, buy the Holoview app or do they um, want something even more for their use case? Or is it like that for most use cases, Holoview app and the, the, the stylus and that's it? Ah, yes, it's a good question. Um, the most customers, they um, have specific wishes. Okay. Of course, uh, they say Holoview is nice to have. It's yeah. nice to see your own products in the air, like for uh, selling people. Yeah, it makes sense. And you don't can take a motor or whatever yeah. into your car and show to the customer or big machine and yeah. with Holoview it's possible. As an example, but yeah. there are other use cases um, like for training or service applications, um, maintenance, mm -hmm. everything around it. And um, for that, we sit together with the companies and they say, okay, we see uh, this use case. We want to solve this problem okay. and then we can um, make a specific project and um, everybody who can see the references 
um, on our website with which customers we are working yeah. um, knows that these kind of customers they have um, an idea in their head yeah. and if we cannot um, bring the idea to life then they will never make a project pro project with us again yeah, and um, nice. every time up to now it was possible for us to um, yeah make so the wishes who, yeah great very cool so now um, with the advent of the magic leap with mm -hmm. the magic leap one um, so at the moment you um, your customers are using the hololens I suppose um, yes, or so some other HoloLens, and maybe you can see here um, oh, okay. some other devices yeah. we have. We are working with the Meta 2 uh, with the Decry glass. Can I take and it? Or? Yes, of course, please, please do it. So, this is this here is the Meta. Yes, this is another um, augmented reality headset. Yes, and um, yeah, definitely so probably. And, I'll put it. Um, yeah, we are working with different kind, like the Decry glass, we don't have it um, here right now and um, it's on the way okay. um, with some people from the company Got it. in Austria right now. Um, and uh, of course now we're some Magic Leap and uh, we had this nice hackathon this weekend yeah. to look how we can work with it and um, yeah, I, I hope that we uh, can go out from the hackathon with a nice solution okay. and um, yeah. So, have you heard from your developers? What is their first impression? Do you think it's going to be easy to port your HoloView app onto the Magic Leap? Yes, um, we think so, that, okay. that it could be no problem. Nice. So, um, do you think in the, um, you're going to use the Magic Leap 1 now? If you speak with customers, like um, probably customers don't know about AR. Probably mm -hmm. they are completely new. They just knew, okay, we, we need something to visualize it. Um, now are you going to t tell them okay you need to get the magic leap one or do you go are you going to tell them okay go for the hololens or go for the meta two um that's a good question that's all about uh, the wishes from the customers okay. because um we have um at the hololens we have the finger gister so we can yeah. work on hands free um with the meta two it have a uh, such great um, quality of the holograms, oh, really? yes, but uh, there is a problem that it's connected with a high-end PC. Got it. Got all it. the time, and oh, uh, because of that, if you are in a big hall, yeah, and no, no, it's not so practical. Yes, and um, but for for some use cases, it is practical. Okay. And because of that, we uh, take it different okay. from customer to customer. Right. And then we know, okay, this would be the best device for okay. your use. Case. Perfect. So now, basically, you have just one more option, right, with the Magic Leap One to show yes. them, okay probably this is better for you because you have to walk around then the meta 2 is better because you're stationary anyways and you need the best quality so the user has lots of different um, options now yes and and that's a, a great a great thing because of um, the different kind of glasses there are um, yeah, is action in the market. Yeah. And because of action in the market, the development to next glasses and of whatever course. is running very fast. Yeah, and this tell. is now the first, um, the first part uh, yeah. or first edition of the glasses. Exactly. Um, to, and um, now let's see what happens in the next years. Yeah. If we remember back to the handy market and maybe, I don't know, what was your first phone? You oh, had the it's, handy. It's, it's a it's a very as a Sony CMD X two thousand. Like you can kill people with it. Yes, yeah, yeah. <laughs> really. Yeah. yeah. And you did it? No. <laughs> no, no, I didn't. I, I wanted sometimes, but I didn't. Yeah. <laughs> nice. <laughs> and um, yeah, obviously, um, in the last ten years, if you look at the handy market uh, from your phone to yeah. the phones uh, which are now available on the market, yeah. then it's crazy. What, it's crazy. what happens uh, you're right so you, you you foresee the same thing with uh, augmented reality headset, yes right? I, I hope so that we can one uh, time in our life that the glasses look a little bit different like uh, some so. normal glasses exactly. sunglasses whatever exactly and then you can uh, call with them or whatever and yeah. um, that's the way we are going cool it's so interesting to talk with you because well you are very deep in the uh, mixed reality industry yes and y you can tell our viewers is is it like um, going up like like this? Is it like uh, growing like very fast? We have lots of companies who come to you and tell us a bit more like um, how your company probably developed. Um, yes, I, um, <laughs> it's uh, everything is running very fast around okay. this market and um, so it's growing. It's fast. growing, of course, and I think that at tw uh, 2020 or 21, there's a point um, where 
the train is so fast running that everybody who don't spring on the train right now would be have a problem in the future. <laughs> wow, that's good. That's good to know. So it's good that you are now, or you're running on the train right now, basically. Yes. You're on the yes. train now already. So, so that's really cool. So um, now this is for the industry, right? For industries, mm -hmm. for, for very professional applications right now. I think that's now at this moment in time, they have the demand. Mm -hmm. They need it, right? For training, for maintenance, it's perfect. They can see the, the machine that they have to main, maintain and they can see the instructions on the, on the lens. But what do you think? When is this going to be interesting for consumers? Oh, yeah. Um, <laughs> this question is really good because yeah. um, the prices from the glasses are very high. Yeah. Um, VR glasses are much cheaper. Exactly. But you have the problem that you are in a whole virtual room and can't use it for uh, some use case in the normal life. And yeah. um, I think with uh, Mita 2, the first step is uh, gone right now because um, we have here pricing from $2,300. The, the Magic Leap One. Yes, the Magic yeah. Leap One. And, it's too expensive. Um, I, yes. It's now, yes, it's expensive, but... For developers, no. I think for develop for you guys, it makes so much sense to get it, right? Of course, but no, for the consumer, no. it's... Uh, yeah, it's too expensive, right? It's now. unbelievable, yes. But but I think that because it's the first step, because if you see at uh, glasses like the Decry or okay. other head-mounted displays, yeah. they cost like 5,000 euro. Yeah. And with it, this is the first step to the right direction yes. to make the price a little bit cheaper. Maybe... Um, It's not the end price, maybe in a few months or in the future, the device would cost 1,000 euro. And I think that that's a price uh, which you pay as a consumer for a high-end PC. And because yeah. of that, you can uh, spend some money for a nice glass. You're right. And probably people won't need to buy a flat screen TV in the future, right? Because everything can be done in augmented It's really nice. At <laughs> home, yeah, yeah, uh, really, yeah. uh, up to now at home, I have a Microsoft HoloLens okay, and cool. sometimes I'm using it for Netflix or whatever yeah. or, or don't want to make some advertise. Yeah. Sorry for that. <laughs> But no um, uh, yes, because you can scale the screen yeah. how large you want. If you um, make a meal in the kitchen, then you have the, um, the, the field of view in front of you, the screen. Yeah. And uh, the screen uh, comes with you if you, you walk around. around. right? You can yes. still cook and still watch. Yes. Nice. And uh, I think that's the future. Nice. In the future, maybe in 10 years, nobody wants to have a screen. More. I think so. Then I you th sit I together on the couch with yeah. a multi-user modus yeah, right. and can watch your movie or whatever. Nice. So, yeah, I think um, this could happen. I think probably what, what always I tell my viewers, I think this could become a really nice consumer, consumer product once Germany is football world champion again in four years. I think <laughs> yes, we hope no, so. <laughs> no, as long as France, it, I think no chance for it to become yeah. to become like a mass market product. But once Germany is a football champion again in four years, then I think in four years it could happen. What do you think? Um, yes, uh, I, I'm technology evangelist. And yeah, because yeah, of you, that, you, uh, you if I yes. don't uh, accept <laughs> it, then yes, yeah. it's, yeah. I, I think so. Yes, right. absolutely. But, but Germany must become football champion then to make it happen for us. Of course. Yeah, yeah. Of course. <laughs> Good. So, so <laughs> obviously. <laughs> so we very much agree to that part. Very cool. Yeah. That was I think it was a really great interview. Mm -hmm. It was so interesting to learn a bit more about um, what you think about uh, AR especially since you are in the industry and mm -hmm. it's really cool to hear that actually the AR industry is growing so much. Oh, you haven't told us yet about the company. So it started with how many people? Four? Yes, with four founders. Four founders. And now we are, yes, we exist since uh, the middle of 2015. Okay. And now we are 35 employees in All Tirol right. and Munich. And in the beginning of next year, we have the plan to um, expand to America, to Silicon Valley. Nice. And open their new office. Okay. And um, yeah. So you're growing. growing. You're growing really fast. Yes. It's nice. a nice thing. We, we like to control Z, yeah. so the fast growing. Yeah, for um, the culture, to keep the culture good and stuff. Yes, right? yeah. but, but I think we are doing it. Okay, well. yeah, I feel you have a very nice atmosphere here. Thank you. No, Thank it's you. really cool. Um, great, great. I think, yeah, I think we have talked about all the important things. And uh, yeah, definitely, if, if you're interested to find out more about um, Hololite, then definitely check out uh, their website, um, holo-light.com. Yes. You can find the link 
in the description below. And yeah, I would like to say thank you, Yannick, so much for this interview. Thank you, Sebastian. You're welcome. Thank you.